of and um, the Honourable Minister of State for Education, Honourable Chukeme Kawajuba, sends his greetings. He was expected to be here by himself, but today is Federal Executive Council meeting, so they are with the President right now. That's why, as the Chief Messenger, he sent me here to come and represent the future. Whatever I say here this afternoon, now I understand. Any mistakes, they will be mine. Any credit will be his. So let's take it as that. Peace, unity, and security. I was listening attentively to the last speaker. If you haven't seen war before, you will not appreciate what peace is. I have witnessed the civil war. I witnessed life in the civil war. I witnessed my fellow Nigerians being slaughtered. I witnessed my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, housing about 47 Igbos in our house just to protect them from slaughter. The trauma as a young man that I witnessed at the time have stayed with me till today. Those who are clamoring for division, war, let's go, let's fight, they, don't, they were not even born when that was happening. So they don't understand what it means to be at war. This is put together by Nigerian youth. Those of us who are slightly older than the youth bracket, we don't even understand the strength of our youth. We are not even able to come to terms that our youth have a lot of capacity. This is being put together not by old people like ourselves, retired ones, but together by Nigerian youth. I want to applaud you for this. Well done. Thank you so much. My brother mentioned something about upward unification to create this geographical thing called Nigeria. Let's go to husband and wife. You go to a club, you go to a church, you go to a mosque, you go to somewhere, you meet your partner there. It is in, and you eventually become husband and wife. That's upward unification. But you have to work it out to make it work. Whether we like it or not, Nigeria must work. And the way it will work is such that we have to understand individualism. We have to understand the difference in our ethnicity. We have to understand our relevance in the scheme of things. What is important mostly is this. It's not about religiosity. I'm a Christian, you're a Muslim, and all of that. It's nothing to do with that. What is important is what the, what's the strength you have to bring to the table. Everything that has broken down in our society today, if you look at what it used to be in the 60s, 70s, and possibly early 80s, emanated from home. Look at what happened at home. If your home is rightly positioned, your children will not be out there doing your home. It's not going to happen. Therefore, I take it back to the home front. A lot of parents have abdicated their responsibilities. You cannot give your child. I remember when we were in another country aside from this one, where as soon as you give, you give back to your child because you need to go to work, you need to pay your bills, you need to pay the nanny, so you put, give your child to a foster parent. I was guilty of that. Lived in London, children were in Wales. Saw them once in two, in two months. And you want them to behave like myself. It's not going to happen. They can only behave like the people they see on a daily basis. Abdication of responsibility. Thank God we quickly had a turnaround and had them home. So one parent had to stay at home to mentor them. Nowadays, we are allowing the society to mentor our children. And we are expecting luxury. We are expecting a lot of goodness from them. It's not going to happen. Home is the first place. Home. Let's sort out what is happening in the home. Let parents begin to take responsibilities. And that is key. Garbage in, garbage out. That, that's what it is. If 
you don't train your children, they will become where they become when they go out there. So what are we saying? This issue of um, unity, there's no need preaching unity. Because unity will come when there is peace. Unity will come when there is love between next door neighbors. I have a neighbor in this country right now who has not spoken to me in about eight years. Regardless of everything I've done to try and put him over, he decides to live in isolation. But one thing is certain, when he runs into trouble, he won't be able to call anybody outside of that environment. He will need people around him. So we need him. You see, like, I go to a church where the priest said to us one time that uh, if love is not hurting, it's not working. What that means in effect is this. They're asking you to give to people. Oh, give them some clothes. And then you go into your pocket. Clothes you've not worn for 10 years. You gave it out. You haven't given out anything. You've only given out waste. But when you give out something that you feel you've given out, then you have shown love that hurts. Today is Ash Wednesday. A lot of us don't even know the significance of that. Nigeria has become so religious now that I'm afraid should Satan not be running away from this country? Everybody is a born again Christian, born again Muslim, born again Abelist, born again this, born again that. And yet, the moment they put you in the public office, you siphon every money available to you. And you go back to church, you go back to the mosque and pray. Do you think your prayers can be answered? Let us look at it from home, home front. We were dragged into church when we were young. Dragged into church. However, we were able to listen to the reason why we were taken there. You come out of that church, you are not able to sing when you go out, even as a young man. You are afraid to do certain things wrong. You hear your teacher is coming from the next village. You quickly run to go and get your books and start reading. Do we have that today? Students challenge their teachers. When the teachers are not doing what they want, they call their parents to attack the teachers. That is the society we live in. We want peace, unity, and progress. How is that going to happen? Let's go back to the drawing board. That's where we need to go. We need to do a self-clinical assessment of individuals. Let's look at ourselves. What is it that I, I, I am doing wrong? My brother said, let's talk about us, not me. I remember in the 60s, my grandfather, when people come from the, from the city, we, we only eat bread once they were when people visit. That's the only time we eat bread. It was Gary all the way. So when he's going to buy the bread for all of us, he will buy for all the grandchildren. He will not buy for himself. However, every grandchild, nine of us, will cut a bit of ours and give to him. Eventually, he has more than us. That has stayed with me. The political juggernaut, Baba Desoya, said that to us when he came visiting him in England. He said, look, when you look after others, others look after you. Let us think of others. Let us think of Nigeria. Let us think of, of the strength we have in our youth. Our youths are not useless. We know the few recalcitrants. Yes, you get that everywhere in the world. But Nigerian youths are eggheads. They are, just, they are stubbornly uh, uh, rich, if you know what I mean. Stubbornly rich in the heads. But what is important is for us to be able to gather that strength together for the progress of this country. There's no point in sowing seeds of this country. It's not, it's not going to get us anywhere. I'm Yoruba, you are Igbo, you are Hausa. It's totally irrelevant. My minister did something. When he was appointed, all the essays are from all the ge uh, ge geographical zones. He has Yoruba, Hausa. Wherever you come from, he gets one from northeast, northwest, and he's an Igbo man. He didn't invite all Igbos because he's thinking Nigeria. He's in a position that talks about Nigeria. Now, to wrap up, to wrap up, Leaders of tomorrow mantra, you must reject it. 
the youth of today are not leaders of tomorrow. They are leaders of today. But nobody will give you that position unless you go get it. If you're sitting somewhere and hoping that somebody is going to leave the National Assembly for you to take up this position, it ain't going to happen. What's going to happen is for you to come together, be strategic, and look at things you need to do. But be sure you need to do it. Be sure you want to do it. Be sure you are thinking about the country Nigeria. Be sure you are thinking about the people around you. And then it will be possible. I remember when they were telling us that we were leaders of tomorrow. We were in university in December. Some of us went to university in those days. And they said we were leaders of tomorrow. Those who were telling me I was a leader of tomorrow are still my leaders today. 50 years later. I just wonder when I'm going to be a leader. My grandchildren are rising up, they're coming up now, and I'm still told that we are youth. <laughs> I'm from Open State. The, the youth leader of my party, about a few years ago, was 63 years old. Youth leader. <laughs> Thank God, Mr. President appointed a 40-year-old to be the EFCC chairman. That's the direction we want to go. That's the direction we want to go. What's happened to the 29, 27, 35 year olds? What's wrong with them? Our old was an hour when he was at that assembly. Our old was President Obasanjo when he was head of state. How old was General Gowan when he was head of state? We're just asking this. How old were they? And you are telling a 45, 50 year old man that he's the leader of tomorrow. May God help Nigeria.